welcome back to Where You Shoot. My name is Andrew. I am a lifetime DIYer and I am now making videos about it. So, uh, last week's project, I made some denim chaps. They were super involved. It was, it was a struggle. So hopefully this week's project will be a little bit easier. Um, <laughs> we'll see. So this week we are going to be transforming two ugly light fixtures that are in my apartment and hopefully making them look a little bit better. There's a couple of reasons why I don't just buy a new fixture. First, I'm renting this apartment, so it's always weird to like, do you buy a new fixture and then install it and then you have to take it out when it's over and then you have to store the old fixtures and put them back in and I just don't want to deal with that. So if I can leave what's there and make it look better, then that's going to be the best thing. Second, my apartment has like 16 foot ceilings. So as much as I would like to think of myself as someone that wants to get on a ladder and switch out a fixture like that, I don't see myself that way. Yeah, we're not going to do that. And finally, a new fixture would run me anywhere from like, I don't know, 30 bucks if I got something really cheap at Ikea to like well over a hundred bucks a piece. And I don't have that kind of money right now. So we're, we're going to make it on the cheap, cheap. Um, so I have a plan. The current fixture looks a little like this. We have the little plate thing. There's this part that comes down below. And then there's these three little pieces that meet at the top where the chain is. I don't mind this part down here. I kind of like the light that it gives off. It's very fluorescent and kind of industrial, which is not my favorite living type light. But I think that for, um, you know, working out or doing a project or whatever, that lighting is actually working pretty well for me. So I'm going to leave all of this intact down here. I have thought that if I were to take something and cover up this part up here, boom, we might could end up with a fixture that looks a little bit like one of these super industrial kind of like um, warehouse type lights. My theory is that if I take a plastic pot and drill a hole in the bottom here so that it's big enough for the chain to fit through, then I can just sit it down on top. And because I don't want to go in all the way up here and take out or uninstall the fixture, I think I'm going to cut a little line up the side here so that this will be able to open and move around the chain. And then I can go in with a little piece of painted tape and just seal that over like that. I bought these plastic pots at Lowe's that were the perfect size to fit my fixture. I then somehow decided it was a good idea to try to remove the sticker even though I ended up drilling it out anyway. I don't know. I measured across the bottom to find the center, which was tricky given the curved edges of the pot. I would recommend doing what I did on the second pot where I drilled down from the inside because the center is really clearly marked in there so it will be a little bit more accurate. For both pots, I started with the small drill bit and then moved to a larger bit, and then finished with a bit that had a circular blade that could create much larger holes. I had to wriggle it around a little bit to get through the plastic. This is when I realized that the pot had a double layer reinforced bottom. I muscled it around a little bit more to cut through that inner layer. If you have lower ceilings and feel comfortable uninstalling and reinstalling the fixture yourself, you could stop here and just thread the wires through the hole. I needed to open up the side to be able to get it around that chain. I ran a flexible tape measure down the side to help me draw a straight line that I could cut along. And then I went in with the handsaw and cut all along that line. You can see I didn't really cut exactly on the line that I drew, but I think it's pretty close. Um, I didn't anticipate like this whole like double bottom on the pot situation. I don't know if you can see in there, like the bottom is reinforced and then this part isn't really attached. So it might give me some problems in the way that I wanted it or I thought that it might open up and wrap around. But I think if I like push this apart, I think I can uh, weave, sort of weave the chain in through there and then try to adjust it. Um, I'm gonna go give that a go. I'm not gonna show you guys just yet because I don't want to kill the effect entirely, but um, I'll let you know. All right, so I didn't put it entirely on there because I was worried that if I put it on, I wouldn't be able to get it off. Um, but I think it's gonna work well enough, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut the other one, paint them, and so they're ready to go up, um, and hopefully it'll work out.
So I finished cutting and now we're on to painting. I wanted to do the cutting before I did the painting because I'm using a spray paint that I just have on hand. It's not really made specifically for plastic like some of the ones that they make now. So I didn't want to have to handle it too much once I paint it. I mean, we'll see how that goes when I have to kind of wrestle it onto the light fixture. But um, I think that, uh, that cutting was definitely the best choice to go first. So I'm gonna take these outside and paint them. I applied the spray paint in light, even layers, alternating between the pots to build up several coats. So I have the pots mostly painted. Um, they're looking pretty good. I think I wanna put maybe one more little coat on them. But because the pot base is black, I think that um, the silver paint, even if it's not completely opaque or completely covered everywhere, it gives that kind of aged metal feel. So I'm okay with that. I also um, am going to be painting some blue painter's tape with the silver paint. Um, I wanna have a nice tape edge to put over our seam. Um, and I could get some sort of silver duct tape or silver, um, you know, something like that, but I think that it would, uh, the finish might not match exactly. So I'm hoping that with this, it will take the paint well enough that it will be able to sort of get, match the finish of the pot and make one seamless look. I cut two lengths of painter's tape and lightly pressed them onto a box so I could paint them. And finally, I turned the pots over to make sure I got the rim coated as well. So I've given these a few minutes to dry. Uh, you can see it's not the most solid paint job I've ever done in my life. Um, I also didn't have the most solid <laughs> painting conditions ever. It was like 90 degrees and super humid, so they were definitely sweating a little bit, which was not great. But um, you can see even in the places where the paint is kind of like coming off, rubbing off a little bit or is a little uneven, it just reads as kind of like a vintage metal type look, which is why that black base is so nice. Um, so now I'm going to uh, give these probably a few more minutes to dry and then start to put them in place. Um, so if you have a fixture like mine or a similar fixture, just keep an eye out for like some of the features of the fixture. Um, I noticed when I was uh, sampling putting this on here before, I accidentally bumped one of these and this hook came undone. If all three hooks were to come undone, this whole plate would just fall and crash to the ground. Um, that would not be good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and um, secure a twist tie around some of these things just to hold it in a little bit better. I'll probably end up removing them at the end just because I only have a couple twist ties on hand and I won't have enough to do the other fixture as well. But I just wanna make sure that while I'm wriggling this thing around and trying to get the pot over this, um, the chain in this part up here, I wanna make sure that uh, these hooks aren't gonna come undone in that process. At this point, I just kind of get up on the ladder and wing it. <laughs> it didn't really want to go around the chain at first, but with enough persistence and enough wriggling, I managed to be able to get it to close around on the other side. <sighs> okay, so that didn't go as planned. I was thinking the pot would be tall enough to not have to pass over that top little uh, um, bracket thing, um, but it wasn't, so it was like, a half inch up off the bottom all the way around so it wouldn't really lock into place and look like one piece in the way that I wanted it to. So um, I measured the thing and I think I have to cut the hole like four inches wide. You can see it's like about an inch and a half too small right now. If I make it bigger, it should pass over the thing without a problem. Um, so we're back to drilling again. So I've marked my pot about how big I think the hole needs to be. I wasn't super precise with this. I think I'm gonna try to go back in with the hand saw. It's gonna be super tedious because all of this is doubled right here. Ugh, it's gonna be awful. But I think that um, ultimately it doesn't have to look great because you're never gonna see up above the fixture anyway. I just want it to work and be done. But what I'm gonna try to do and what I hope works is I cut these little notches that come from the center out. And then on the inside, you can see I folded down just the inner part here. Because I still think that if it only goes to the outer part, it should clear it. And um, and does, this part doesn't have to move, but I think it's just this lower layer that needs to get out of the way for it to sit properly. Um, so we're gonna give that a go. Victory. So I put it back on and it actually sits all the way down to the bottom. It's hanging off the edge a little bit right now. I need to reposition it a bit, but it fits down in there just as it should. So now I'm gonna go in with my painter's tape and just run it right over that nasty little seam right there and see if we can make that look a little better. I press the tape all along the seam 
making sure to give it enough to be able to really go down into all of the cracks and sit really flat. At that point, you can't really see it too well here, but I went in with a pair of scissors and I kind of scored each place that there was like a, an indention in the pot or particularly at the top where there was that ridge that's actually two separate pieces. Scoring the tape there and actually cutting it apart in some places really helped to match the look of the pot there and make it a little bit more seamless and invisible. All right guys, they look so good. Uh, I knew it was gonna be good, but I didn't know it was gonna be this good. Um, this is a super easy DIY. If you have a similar fixture, it's affordable, doesn't take very long. Uh, give it a try and let me know how it goes.